look fat, I look good. <laughs> down to it, down to say goodbye. Yeah. Come on down, say goodbye. Bye. He's so happy. <laughs> Do you like blue grease, Louis? Louis, what's the story with the blue grease? Do you know? I, no, I was... You know, you've been here, don't be... <laughs> yeah, but for the viewers at home... No, they don't need to know about that. Louis served his apprenticeship on blue grease. Is he being honest? What? Fred Dibner is there. I know why this is, because you said it before and his phone's listening to us right now. That is bonkers. That's Amazon. Oh yeah. Mate, I called him Fred Dibner on Facebook. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> it all started working on a series in my dad's shed. I followed my dreams and joined the Marines, serving in Afghanistan. Defenders were always part of me. So here we are, building custom machines with my awesome team in Shropshire. We are Maker. Yep. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dave, for those of you who don't know me, and I am absolutely baking. So we're calling it a day soon because it's just far too hot in the workshops. But anyway, so I want to introduce today with this car. This car has come all the way from China, and a couple arrived here a couple of weeks ago, and God, we had some language barriers, but we got there in the end by pointing at things, and there's a new joke with Jeremy and the lads. So we ended up with wheels black, not black wheels. <laughs> so anyway, this is gonna have some nice banded steel wheels, it's having the next size up, some 285 BF Goodrich KM3s. And the engines are going to be coming out soon, going to have a full rework, revamp, freshen up. I think it's about 80,000 miles now. So it's having the full Alley Sport treatment in the front. Working away to the pack, if you want to come in here. So the whole thing has been dynamated top to bottom. We've got the little last little bits of the footwells to do, the bulkhead to do. All behind the dash has been done. Jeremy this week has just fitted the new Halo um, head unit. We're a big fan of those head units. They work fantastic. We're going for a little sound upgrade. We're going for a tracker. Uh, what else are we going for? A new alarm system because these guys are now moving to, I believe they're not far from London, so they want to make sure this car's secure because we all know how easily they're getting stolen right now. So we're going for a, a smart track device, that kind of thing. And yeah, generally it's basically having a refresh and this car is probably the cleanest, let's say rot free. So it, it certainly proves that like the hemisphere, you know, the atmospheres are so much better for those cars abroad. And if you want to come inside, I'll show you around. I'll probably tell you what he's doing. What we've done today, Tom? Completely wired it up. It's done. So we turn the key on Monday, yeah? Yeah. That'll be the plan. What is it and what's it having done? So what this is a, is a twin turbo BMW straight six that we've taken out of an X5, it's been reworked, put back together. It's an automatic, so it's going to be a six speed automatic with electronic shift that I'll show you in a moment. Tom's been here today doing all the electrics and the wizardry to make the Puma dials work. That's his neat little box there. Yeah. So, what we have here, this is the latest LCI shifter. So, this is the six speed shifter. All this is going to be wrapped in black leather, nappa leather like you see here with a nice white stitch. The client wants us to continue the stitches down here. And basically we're going to give them a nice cigarette lighter, you know, some extra goodies there. But this is the latest shifter that can be combined in these vehicles. So, nice tidy bit of kit. You've guessed it guys, so Ethos is such a bit of breakthrough in our industry, we've decided to build another one. This belongs to a very good client of ours, Steph, who has been super, super patient with us because this engine has been a bit of a headache. So we've had to order a custom loom from the USA, and we've had to have things like the ECUs decoded, demobilized, to basically run out of their previous vehicle because the Americans seem to like putting these blocks in ECUs, but we all do it, so manufacturers don't like us doing what we're doing. 
and basically taking their nice V8s and putting them in anything. So what you see here is this beautiful direct fuel injected V8 and this is going to be going, <coughs> well it is, it's actually coupled to an 8-speed and if you look in here you'll see that we've we've just finished the high-low shifters so we've basically got the high and low in exactly where it was before so to the untrained eye, apart from the American shifter, this car is going to look totally stock and that's what we want it to do so you know be a bit of a sleeper apart from the hellish V8 note if you like. So it's got the banded wheels, it's got the big brakes, it's going to be what's one of, like an understated truck that oozes class, that's the one. So guys, for any of you that are interested in a 3.3, three, sorry, cancel that. Go so again. if anyone's interested in a 330D conversion, this Defender has been done. This has got our MT82 six-speed conversion, so it's manual, it's six-speed, it was originally a Puma, so this has got a reconditioned gearbox, had a fully reconditioned engine, reconditioned transfer case. The only thing that hasn't been reconditioned, guys, is the axles, right? But they're tight, it's just had all the bushes, it's just had some nice little side steps fitted, it's got the lower entry, I think they're, they're similar to the Recaro CS, but they're a very nice seat nonetheless. They've got like a perforated centre material. But the cars, it's got a nice head unit, it's like a double dim with a piano black console. We've literally just serviced it, it's got little bits like the OMP steering wheel. At the end of the day, it's a nice tidy truck and we're asking for £30,000. Plus the VAT, it's got all the nice optimal bits, optimal handles, extended mirrors. It can either come with its back on or we're happy to take it off or whatever suits you. Um, heavy duty drive flanges, Ashcroft drive flanges in the back. Um, other than that guys, it's a, it's a very nice car that will, it's got its wear and tear thing so Odd scratches at the back here. Come on here, Chris. So it's got heavy, heavy duty towing frame. It's got the rear steps. It's got the rigid light there for reversing. So this thing is not shy of light. The tyres, I believe, have only done about 10,000 miles. So absolutely loads of life left in them. But it's going to be a great buy for anybody. So £30,000 plus for that. Come get it bought, guys. Yeah, yeah, we're good. All right. Um, yeah. So, wait, wrong hand. Here we go. So, yeah, I was doing some research uh, at home, as I do, just because I'm interested in this engine. And upon my research, I found that there was an actual, there was actually a recall for a component in the supercharger. When I came in the following Monday, I wanted to check the numbers. That we had on the on the supercharger and so on check the engine numbers and see reference that to general motors um recall document and the numbers match up that it was the first revision which was the one that had the inherent fault and what engine is this it's a it's an it's an lsa so it's a chevrolet engine. and this is in wombat it's which in wombat, is back yeah. in for a bit of work yeah so you would usually find this this engine's native to a Cadillac CPSV, or um, it's also in a Camaro ZL1. Um, I think it's 2012 to 2015 range. So that's where this comes out. This is a crate engine, so uh, it was never assigned to a vehicle. It is, it's just the engine in the box. The, but the issue is, is that General Motors don't make the supercharger. 
Now, Eaton make the supercharger, which is a UK based company. So, um, as per GM instructions, the supercharger should be should be replaced. But that's because, um, at, like a, a Chevrolet dealership or a Cadillac dealership, uh, they're not going to strip your supercharger to bits. They'll just take it off and replace it. The part that it needs is 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 like. I think it was like $90 or something like that. It's just a labor intensive process to get to it. So it's behind the nose, which is the front of the supercharger that houses the, the butterflies for um, the vacuum control and the super boost, they call it. You basically just turn your supercharger on and off um, by opening a valve one goes to the supercharger and one goes to the ports via the supercharger. So um, that coupling is currently on its way with the gaskets to replace the intake manifold. And uh, while I've had this apart and taken the front out, I'm just tidying some of the plumbing because it's been in here a while now. So any evidence of something that's getting hot or being rubbed or anything like that, it shows now so I can find it and put it right, move everything. I've got a lot more room as well with all this stuff off and I've got access to places I can't get to with it on so I can tuck it all in, hide it all and heat protect everything. And then as soon as my parts get here, I will rebuild the supercharger, replace all the seals and gaskets, talk it up, Plonk it on, crank that up, and that'll be all good. Calling you up at two in the morning, but you don't wanna talk, you don't wanna bother. Yeah, so I took another shot, let my brain do the walking. I don't wanna be a friend, I want something real. Maybe I'll save you. I just put it back together. the lid. Now, inside this lid, there is a water to air heat exchanger, which is what this is. This is the intercooler, basically. So, this out of here. Someone's been playing with the rotors. Right, so the, this, these chambers go to the ports, so these go to the, to the engine. Now this, this supercharger is technically upside down, so it blows up. So it comes up through there, and then out around and into the ports, like that. Now this area here is the bypass. So if you look at the nose, here we've got a, a butterfly in here. So if this is open, the air going straight into the engine around the supercharger. And if it's shut, it has to go into the supercharger, through the supercharger and then into the engine, giving you boost. Now, the issue is the shaft this shaft, so here's where the belt drive, so the belt comes off the crank pulley and then it drives this shaft here, yeah. very nice, however there is a coupling, this coupling, and you notice there's a spring in there, and the idea behind this is that it takes, like, as you go up in the revs and as the engine's rotating, it doesn't rotate as smooth as you might think. It does it in pulses. It's a four-stroke cycle. So in order to take the rattling out of that is what the spring's for. So it takes the lash out. Now, this design, this spring, snaps in the centre and then wears the shaft down. 
um, which causes two problems. So inevitably the shaft is going to shear off, which will then render your supercharger useless. And at the same time, it's all the material that's shaving off the shaft is living in this housing. And behind this is a bearing for the rotors. And they are extremely sensitive to contact or dirt or contamination, anything. Um, we're talking like microns amount of clearance between the lobes. So if this starts to vibrate, the only thing that's going to be a result is damage. So with having all the grease uh, contaminated, it's going to wear the bearing at an alarming rate. Now, if you look at this, bearing in mind, um, General Motors cover this for 10 years or 120,000 kilometers, whichever one comes first. This engine has done like 1,900 and something miles, right? So that's pretty much brand new and it's already left witness mark on the shaft. You can see that. You know, so in a relatively short space of time, it's worn it enough to be able to feel it. So, you know, another another 2,000 miles is going to be, let's say, twice as bad as that. You're talking within 20,000 miles, this will be gone. So, it's one of those, you put it right now, we'll be prepared to rebuild a lot more than just this. So what is actually the recall then? What is the damaging part, the faulty part? This. And what's the repair going to be? So the the revision, so the factory revision, Eaton's revision to this problem is to make one solid coupler, which is made out of, I think it's a polyurethane coupler. Um, so it looks almost identical to that, but it doesn't have any moving parts. It's one part, like this has got moving part, which is the bit that fails. So having a solid coupler, um, which is an eaten genuine part, like that's the bit that was developed to solve this problem. That's what's on its way. So we're going to put that, I mean there are aftermarket ones available, um, but the genuine one from Eaton that, that made this supercharger, it was like $90. It's just, the difference was like about $15. It's just not worth the risk. So Eaton made it, Eaton's, this is getting eaten parts so once that's once I put that in I can I can reassemble everything else um, change these the gaskets on here are going to be changed um, any mate and faces all have new gaskets and then um, I can put the blower back on and then I will put the crank pulley back on and the dampener and just start putting the belts back together really but while i'm waiting for the bits i'm taking the opportunity to just replumb some things and tidy some things up so that's what that's my task that's what i'm up to at the moment Oh man, what's going on? That there was like that. Yeah, you couldn't get that in. I was trying to get that on there, I was going, huh? Yeah. But then I realised it did that. Yeah. I'll grease your shaft in a minute, Louis. <laughs> you heard the rumours, Louis? Did I steal on? It's Friday, he's up to turn this afternoon. Do you want a blue finger? No. <laughs> you can't find the hole, Bruno. Yeah. Filming. So leading on from the dyno episode that all went tits up, today we've pulled out the faulty injectors which are these here. So these bodies have got some serious modifications inside them that allow some serious fuel to give us serious power in theory but we've had a couple of these dribbling so they're going to have to go back to the diesel shop 
get checked, possibly rebuilt, but Keith at United Diesel, turn these new bodies around for me, rapid fire, so we can keep this truck going and get the build finished because I promised Phil, the owner of it, a fast turnaround and to get this truck out. So today we're fitting these and hopefully getting it out of the door faster. So what you see here is, this is the test sheet you basically get to prove that the injectors is meeting its spec. But what I need to do is number these because the numbers related to the injectors I need to code into the engine's ECU for smooth running and basically keep all the ECU and all the control systems happy. Video guy, bottom five truck, you know. Wow. Fucking John, you never see it because it's always yeah, it's always on. But it's not like that. Oh, that. Oh, lights on. Bush. Yeah. yeah. Special reality. Uh, little Indian. Little Indians. Not Indians. 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 What's an Indian? It's a, it's a nerd thing. You wouldn't understand. <laughs> Honestly. Don't open the door to questions on YouTube because you'll be sitting Little there. Little Indian and Big Indian is the order of canvas and bite. And let's just end the conversation there. That's right. What? What's right? You heard right? the man. I didn't know what he said. You asked him what bit, what little Indian was. He just explained it to you. Bits and bites and bits and bites and bobs and bends and so on and so forth. Giga shits and mega farts. That's what it's all about. That's the one. So what we have here, this is a Defender 130, was a Puma, until we pulled its heart out, because we don't like them engines. So this is a very, very unusual colour. No one, I can guarantee, no one's seen one of these before, apart from the guy who bought it off, because Land Rover said that there was only two made, and one of them never left the production line. So, very interesting. But this vehicle is going to end up with an LT4 supercharged engine. So, 650 horsepower at the box, with an eight-speed automatic. So keep your eyes on this build. It's going to go back the same colour. It's going to have a nice cab on the back. It's having a full exterior roll cage, full interior roll cage. It's going to be a nice machine at the end of the day. So this is the American Restoration Project. Darren's been very busy the last couple of weeks. Front end's gone on. Headlights have gone on. There's the plonker in there. <laughs> and... God, well, that, what's been going on this week? So we've done, the hoses have gone in, boost hoses have gone in, we've got a nice galvanised filter unit there. Yeah. Trying to make these cars future-proof the best we can. If we can't powder coat it, we galvanise it, basically. So, there you have it. Hopefully this car will be driving next week. Darren stops messing about, pulls his finger out. There we go. Right, guys, thanks for tuning in, and make sure you like and subscribe, share the world, and buy more trucks. Take it easy. Bye-bye.